In 2006, the IAU voted to remove Pluto from the list of planets in the solar system, essentially demoting it from a planet to a dwarf planet. That sent millions of teachers and parents with Sharpies to go cancel out Pluto from their kids' science textbooks. In this video, we're going to look at lists and see how easy it is to remove and add items into the list. And we'll see if there's anything we can do for poor Pluto. Don't go anywhere. Hi, this is Steve Sell from Digital Asset. Apart from software and technology, I love astronomy. I've become a fan in the last uh, year or so, and I'm constantly amazed at the new things that we are learning about the universe. Take a look at this picture of the Milky Way that I took in August. Astonishing, isn't it? Another astonishing thing I learned was the removal of Pluto from the list of planets of the solar system. Super strange, right? See, what happened was the astronomers were discovering more and more celestial bodies like Pluto. So they decided to change the criteria and Pluto didn't meet the bar. So it was demoted to a dwarf planet. I don't like it, but I'm no astronomer. I thought in this video, it'd be great for us to use that as an example to see how we can handle lists in DAML. In your project, you will undoubtedly need to lump more than one data point into one variable, and lists will be the way to go. So let's take a closer look, and we're going to do something radical. We're going to put Pluto back in the list. As always, we're going to fire up the terminal and uh, do a demo new. Let's call it Justice for Pluto. Ah, that's a little dramatic, but just let's call it uh, Solar System Planets. And we're going to use the template Empty Skeleton. Uh, this uh, will require us to create our new uh, demo, our own demo file. That should be fine. Let's fire up Demo Studio and Visual Studio VS Code will fire up. All right, let's go into the folder where we need to create this file. And uh, let's go ahead and save it before we forget. And we'll call it uh, main.demo. Wonderful. Here, I'm trying to make sure that we have saved the demo file into the right folder. So let's go ahead and define the module main, same as the file name. And we're going to use demo script. We're not going to use the navigator or any UI, but we'll use the script and its output to help us uh, look at our code. I'm going to define, it, uh, define a contract ID. Uh, we're going to call it universe. Um, and there will be just two input arguments. Uh, a, an astronomer that will be authorizing this contract and um, a planet, and that's the way you would uh, define an array by using the, the brackets. Okay, so the signatory will be just the astronomer, and the astronomer is going to uh, be able to add a planet um, and be able to remove a planet. So let's wire up the add so here's the choice. The first choice is to add it. So when he, he or she exercises this choice, we will insert a planet into the list. And the only information we need is just the name of the planet that we are trying to add. So let's uh, set it as a text. And under the do block, we're going to say, let's create a contract out of this template. And we're going to set the planets. And this is the way you would append to the planets list. Now, this is an interesting point. We're going to take a pause for one second. This, by default, will add the new item to the beginning of the list. And this is actually a very good thing. Remember that DAML is a version of Haskell. And in Haskell, lists are constructed behind the scenes as linked lists. Now, linked lists, if you remember your computer science uh, courses, uh, is a, a data structure that link one value to another to another. In order for you to get to any 
item along that chain, you need to start at the beginning. So if you're looking for something at the end, you will need to traverse your link list at, at the start of the link list, which they call the head. Now, adding an item to the beginning of the link list is merely just changing the head so that the new item is now the head. Now, if you want to add an item at the end of the link list, you will need to traverse from the head all the way to the tail and then add it. So your, your, um, your time complexity becomes O of N. So big O of N, which means for as long as your link list is, you need to traverse the whole length just to get to add it at the end. So that takes a hit on performance. Fantastic. Now let's go ahead and wire up the second choice, which is to remove the planet from the list. So remove the planet as a choice will return the same universe ID. And uh, we're gonna simply ask for the name of the planet to remove. Uh, that will be of type data, uh, type text, I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna do the following. Uh, we're gonna create the same contract out of this template. And the command to remove an item from a list is delete. Now you notice that it is uh, giving an error. Just go ahead and import the da dot list, uh, and that should uh, activate that function. Now let's uh, start wiring up our uh, our script here. We're gonna have the script return a universe ID, and for the test, we are gonna just run a couple of simple uh, lines to make sure that everything's working. I like Neil deGrasse Tyson, so I'm gonna call my astronomer Neil, though I think he's technically a theoretical um, astrophysicist, but that's okay. Uh, solar system uh, will be the first contract, and what we're gonna do is to have Neil uh, create the universe. Um, universe. Actually, let's call it a planetary, uh, planetary system. Uh, forgive the misspelling here planetary system. I'm missing the R in this demo. That's okay. Um, so it's not really the universe. The universe is much wider, but let's call it the planetary system. Pardon the typo. Uh, and we're going to create it with the astronomer as uh, Neil. And we are going to pass in uh, a list of planets that were uh, in this example already discovered, let's say. Um, now you can pass in an empty list if you want to, but we're going to just uh, preload it with one, two, three, four, five, six uh, planets. And then we'll add the rest in the uh, following lines. So let's try this and see if it works at all. Let's look at the script results. Fantastic. We got Earth all the way to Saturn. That's in. Uh, so we are good. Now we do need to return the results into a contract ID here. So we'll call it the solar system. So this is contract number one, 0, 0.0, as you can see in the output. Uranus was discovered in 1781. So let's go ahead and say that it was uh, discovered. And Neil is going to go ahead and uh, he's not going to create it. He's going to exercise the command to add it. Uh, so he's going to add to that currently active contract. He's going to uh, exercise the choice at planet. And he's going to supply a name, Uranus, and we should be good. Uh, let's temporarily uh, comment this out to make sure that we add the planet correctly. Yep, it went in. Wonderful. So let's uh, restore that and make sure that we have a new active contract called Discover Uranus. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is to add a few more uh, planets. The next one that was discovered was Neptune. Uh, it was discovered in... Um, 1846 so let's go ahead and just change that now remember that we need to exercise the choice on the latest active contract which is discovered uranus and we're going to add uh, neptune so pluto was discovered in 1930 and so we're gonna just copy and paste this line to add pluto to the planets uh, but let's try something let's try to add neptune a second time uh, let me just change the contract. We're going to add Neptune a second time, and you see that there are two entries of Neptune in the output results. So 
How do we take care of something like that? So this is what uh, we can do. Now we go back into our choice under the do block and we can do a, a check here that says if the element doesn't exist, we can proceed executing the code. So basically this is a conditional uh, check, a condition, a precondition check to make sure that uh, this is not an element and this is how we would code it to make sure that it's not an element in the planet list. Of course, we can use a set. Uh, by definition, a set can only contain unique elements, but we're using a list here. You see that a, uh, an exception has been thrown and displaying the exact message that we had. So let's correct that and put it to Pluto. And that went in, fantastic. Awesome. Now, uh, for the next step, let's try to remove Pluto just like the IAU did uh, in, in 2006. So we're gonna remove Pluto by uh, exercising a choice on the current contract called remove planet. So Neil is going to exercise the command on the current active contract and the choice is called remove planet and we're going to supply a planet name Pluto and look at the output it's already gone. That's great but what if we add um, a typo? Uh, obviously there's no Plutos and uh, how can we check for things like that? Similarly, we can do an assert message to say, hey, look, we cannot find this planet. And the way we check it is to use a elem or element followed by the planet that we are removing or trying to remove from the list. So again, it throws the exception just as we expected that they cannot find this planet. So the rest of the code doesn't execute. Fantastic, let's fix that. And everything is back to normal. Pluto has been removed. Not good, right? Okay, so now we are going to depart from uh, uh, conventional uh, thinking here. We're gonna reinstate Pluto and we are gonna try to add it. So Neil is going to uh, exercise a command to the latest active contract he's going to call the we're going to exercise the at planet choice and we're going to add pluto back in so uh, that is great but the order of the planets are sort of all over the place the last few were added line by line and the rest were part of a list uh, we can sort them if we want to so let's try that next let's go up to our code and um check out that blue lint uh what they call linter there, uh, we can take care of that. Uh, it's telling you to use a particular fix. Now go into the dlint.yaml and add this following line uh, that will ignore um, that, that uh, infix um, lint that pops up. Okay, it's, uh, it's st it'll still be there. If you were to close your um, environment and reload demo studio again, it should be gone. Outstanding. All right, let's uh, load up our script results again. We were trying to sort the elements in the planets list. And to do so, um, it's as easy as adding the word sort and putting that line in parentheses. You will get a error under sort. Uh, just go ahead and go up and remove the delete from the parentheses and that will load in the entire library that you can use. Now, see that it's already sorted that is great now we can also do something like reverse if we need to but remember that we are dealing with a linked list so the the there's a performance hit if this list gets way too large now um there are when you must must add to the end of the list uh this is the way you would do it you would specify the planets first followed by a plus plus and then you add the planet that you're adding to uh, as a single element list all right, so but please don't forget the performance hit. So, um, so we are now would have added Pluto at the end of the list as the results show. And uh, wonderful. Now let's go back to our test script again, and uh, let's see what happens. Uh, let's first assign that to a new contract ID. Let's call it reinstated Pluto. And what we're going to do next is this. We are going to 
uh, try to add Pluto again, to reinstate it again. Um, and we should see that it already exists, right? So that is correct. But is there another way to handle that? Yeah, we can always do a, a dedupe to remove the duplicate. But I find the assert um, uh, line to be a more elegant solution. There's no reason to uh, continue executing the code, only to do more work. So we'll, we'll keep the assert uh, statement at the top. So we are not going to add um, Pluto, uh, but let's try something else. Let's try adding a list to the list. So a list of planets. So they discovered a bunch of dwarf planets, and now we want to add a bunch of planets at the same time instead of doing it singularly. So we need a new, uh, we need a new, oops, this should be two list. We need a new choice that can add planets instead of just a singular planet. So we're going to ask for now a list that's going to be of type text. So essentially, we're asking for a list of the text data type, and we're going to add it to a list of text data type. And remember that you cannot mix the data type. It's homogenous. So that's, it has to be the same data type inside of a list, unlike what you would find, say, in JavaScript, where you can mix and match. Uh, elements or uh, data types inside an array. So we're going to do a plus plus just like what we did for the previous uh, method of adding a planet to the end of the list. Uh, we have no choice now but to add two lists together using plus plus. So let's uh, go down to our test and we now have a choice called add planets and we are going to specify uh, the planets to add and we're going to um, just list them out. So they found a bunch of uh, these um, dwarf planets, uh, Iris, Hamiya, Ceres, Makimaki. So to the horror and objection of the IAU, we are not only going to reinstate Pluto, we're going to add more planets <laughs> to the list. Uh, so uh, there's another elegant, more elegant way to do this, and that is to define the uh, list uh, separately before just before we exercise the command, and that is to use the let command, and we'll say these are the new kids on the block, and the new kids on the block are these uh, four beautiful dwarf planets, and we're gonna go ahead and add them into the exercise command, and there you go, Pluto is back, and uh, more planets for everybody. So I hope you had fun manipulating the planets of the solar system with me in this episode. we got more content lined up. See you in the next episode. Bye.